So we're looking at the movement that changed the world. We're talking about the early church, we're looking at the book of Acts, and we're seeing how Christianity spread like wildfire all over the world, all because of a few people, men and women, who were impacted by the gospel, filled with the Holy Spirit, empowered by the Holy Spirit, and then basically just loved not their lives uh, uh, unto death. And they went for it. And currently we're at the end, or we're, we're busy trying to get through Acts chapter 1. And from verse 9 to 11, I want to read there. It says, Now when he had spoken these things, uh, while they watched, he was taken up, and a cloud received him out of their sight. And what, this is talking about the ascension of Christ. And, and while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, as he went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, two angels, uh, um, uh, who also said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? Okay, there's a lot of Christians that are like this today. They're just standing still gazing into heaven. And the same Jesus who was taken up from you into heaven will come in like manner as you saw him go into heaven. So the disciples were, were looking steadfastly towards heaven. They were seeing Jesus you know, being taken up into heaven, his ascension. And, you know, this, this is miraculous. This is something maybe unexpected for them. This is uh, something to kind of like be amazed at, okay? And we may think that this is a completely good thing. And in a way it is, but in a way it's also not such a good thing when you think in terms of uh, some of Jesus' final words of instructions to his disciples. So we've got to think about what were his final words of, uh, of instruction. And that you can find in, one, uh, in Acts chapter 1 verse 4 where he says, you know, go wait in Jerusalem. Be, you know, then you will receive power and then you'll be witnesses. And the witnesses part is go make disciples of all nations. So Jesus had told them, go make disciples. He had told them, you know, go wait for the empowering and then go and be a witness in all the world. And yet they were very, there they were, gazing into heaven, <laughs> focused on Jesus leaving. Okay, you may say that, you know, Jesus um, was just finished ascending, you know, into heaven. And so it's, it's not like they were being disobedient or something. Maybe, you know, they, they just needed a moment. You know, and if you think about it, you know, they'd experienced so much over the, the, the 40 days uh, after Jesus' uh, resurrection that, you know, they, they deserved a moment just to process things. They would experienced so much and now they're experiencing this, you know, profound uh, uh, experience. And, you know, many of you reading this would even say, I would have needed a moment, <laughs> you know, to process this. Yeah, we aren't sure uh, uh, from the passage in Acts um, how long they were standing, staring into heaven. And, but the impression I get when I look at this is that it wasn't very long. It was probably just a few minutes, a short period of time. And uh, the angels, the impression I get, weren't really giving them much opportunity to, um, you know, to, to kind of take in the moment like many of us need. They straight away were seemingly to, seeming to interrupt them, turned the disciples' attention onto heaven, and they said, men of Galilee. And that's a, a firm reminder. Hey, you, you didn't say men of heaven. <laughs> Your citizenship is in heaven. You're gazing up into the place where, where you're going. You know, he, he, put their, he brought them straight back down to earth and said, men of Galilee. The angels were reminding them of their present location. Why do you stand gazing up into heaven? Yeah, it's as if the angels were reminding them that of their location and yes, and saying to them, yes, you have a desire to be with Jesus in heaven. You have a desire for this, this, this heavenly call, but there's work to be done. You need to go, you need to go wait for the power and you need to go and be witnesses in all the world. You know, in order to be effective in this world, we do need to be heavenly minded, but we shouldn't be so stuck there or stuck in our prayer closets and with no action involved. We shouldn't be so focused on eternity that we, we forget about where we are. You can be so super spiritual, and I don't believe this is super spiritual, but we would consider it super spiritual. But you can think that you're so super spiritual, you're spending all your time in the Word, all your time in prayer, but that's actually disobedience. Whilst we're called to grow in our relationship with God, to grow in our understanding of the, the truth and to spend time in prayer and all of that, we're, we're also called to go. We're called to go and make disciples. We're called to go and be a witness in all the world. And so it's important that we have a balance, 
that we're gazing into heaven and whilst we're gazing into heaven into relationship with God we've got our our hope set on eternity we're, we're making sure that that is impacting our hearts where we are so that we can be earthly good so we can make a difference in this world in mere Christianity C.S. Lewis wrote this he said a continual looking forward to the eternal world is not as some modern people think a form of escapism or wishful thinking but one of the things a Christian is meant to do it does it, it does not mean that we are to leave the present world as it is if you read history you'll find that Christians who did the most for the present world were not just those who thought uh, uh, um, sorry if you read history you will find that the Christians who did the most for the present world were just those who, t who thought most of the next the Apostles themselves who set foot uh, um, uh, um, who set on the foot to con the, the conversion of the Roman Empire, the great men who built up the Middle Ages and the e English evangelicals who abolished the slave trade all left their mark on earth precisely because their minds were occupied by heaven. Okay, but here's the thing. Their, what they were thinking led to action. You know, it is, since Christians have largely ceased to think of the other world that they have become so ineffective in this world and a lot of people then say they're being spiritual by you know just spending time in their prayer closet but if it's not leading to action you're not truly being spiritual you're not truly spending time with Jesus like you should or receiving from him you know, aim at heaven and you will get earth thrown in but aim at earth and you will get neither you know, Paul said something similar in his letter to the church of Colossae and in Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 to 5 he says if you then were raised with Christ seek those things which are above where Christ is sitting on the right hand of God set your mind on things above not on things of earth for you died and your life is hidden with Christ and God when Christ who is your life appears then you also will appear with him in glory therefore and now in from verse 5 he starts to say therefore and and the, the, after that he starts to talk about how you can change your life now how, and if you change your life you'll change your environment you'll change your world so your focus on heaven should should lead you to a therefore okay and that is your heavenly focus should lead you to heavenly living okay the greater your gaze into heaven the greater your impact is going to be on this earth i want to encourage you we need to be like what what hebrews 12 uh, encourages us you know focused on jesus the author and finisher of our, of our faith we can run effectively when we've got the right focus yes we gaze into heaven to focus on jesus but we shouldn't let that stop our feet from moving we need to get on with the work that he's called us to do while we are here in this earth